G'day, I'm Yuki Sandev, and in part 17 of this series, Unity for the Absolute Beginner, we will be saving game data such as high scores to the computer using player prefs. Alrighty, today I'm going to go over saving your game data such as high scores and names, etc., to the computer with player prefs. Saving stuff with player prefs is writing to the registry rather than a file on the computer. Uh, this video is kind of a continuation from the last video, which should be linked up on top of your screen right about now. In order to save uh, using player prefs, you only need to make a few small changes to the script, and I will be changing the script from the last video. So let's get into it. So as I mentioned, uh, we're going to alter our game one, which we made earlier in the series. If you have no interest in game one or it makes this more confusing, then let me know and I'll make a separate video on various saving techniques outside of it to make it easier. So we're in game one and let's just jump straight into persistent data script. It's the only script that we're going to be dealing with today. So it's all working as is and saving to a file named highscore.json. Great. So we're still going to use the JSON format, but now we want to save this data to the computer's registry instead. Well, it's actually not that hard. And for this particular game, since the variables are very basic, then there is an even easier way, which I'll show you later on. So right now, to stick with the JSON format, we only need to change these lines in our two functions. So let's make these changes now and I'll explain it afterwards. So let's work with save high score first. All we need to change in here is the last line. So let's rem out this one. And then underneath type in player prefs dot set string and in brackets speech marks high score comma json and then player prefs dot save. Now in the load high score function, so in here we want to make sure that the registry key exists before we try to load from it. Well, we're not looking for a file anymore, so we need to change that. So firstly, rem out the string path line, because we won't need that anymore. And we can also rem out the if statement. And underneath, type in if player prefs dot has key and speech marks high score. And now we're not reading from the file anymore, so we can ram that out. And underneath, type in string JSON equals player prefs dot get string high score. All right, and that's it. So now a rundown. So we rammed out the file write line because we're not writing to a file anymore. And we used player prefs, which is a built in method for saving to the system's registry. Player press dot set string is setting the key name and the data in the registry, and then player press dot save is saving it. Then in the load high score function, the if statement is now looking to see if a key with the specified name exists. If it does, then continue. The data is then retrieved using player press dot get string. So as you can see, there isn't much difference in the scripting with just a few lines to change. Where does it get saved in the registry? Let's save this and get back to the editor and I will show you. Click edit and project settings. Then select player if it's not already selected. So there will be two locations in the registry where this will save. If you run the game in the editor, then the base location will be computer backslash h key current user, backslash software, backslash unity, backslash unity editor. Then the rest of the path is finished off with company name and then the product name. So my full path in the editor would be this. And then in the compiled game running outside of the editor, if you compile this game, uh, the base path would be computer, backslash h key current user, software, and then again, the company name and the product name. So mine outside of the editor would look like this. Alrighty, let's run the game and test it. Okay, run. 
Click on your persistent data objects so that you can see what's going on. So high score stuff should be empty because there's nothing in the registry yet. Type in a name. Play the game. Make some points. Get hit. And click restart game. And there it is. The first high score. Cool. Now let's go find it in the registry. Now, if you're not familiar with the registry, then press your Windows button and just type in, I don't know, the first beginning of it, like REG, and it should pop up with something there to choose from and choose registry editor. From there, you can browse to the full path. Computer, HKEY current user, software, Unity, Unity editor, company name, project name, and there it is. And you open the key up and there is our data in JSON format. Cool. Uh, one thing to note, if you are new to the registry, just be very careful in there. It's not hard with a few accidental deletes to screw up your entire windows. So just be a little careful in there. All right, now when you save to the registry, it doesn't have to be in JSON format. Um, if it's something small and really simple, you can write it straight in there from the script. Since this game is simple with just a couple of pieces of info, we will do it. So let's get back into our persistent data script. So first let's rem out our class and the two functions in the script by putting a backslash and an asterisk up here. And an asterisk and a backslash down here. And now everything in between should be green and it will be ignored by the script. Now what we'll do is just make two quick functions to save and load again. So let's start with save. So type in public void save high score. And in between the curlies, player prefs dot set string high score name in speech marks, comma player name. And then player prefs dot set int high score in speech marks, comma, player score. And then we'll make a load function. So public void load high score. And in between the curlies, type in high score name equals player prefs dot get string high score name in speech marks. And then high score equals playerprefs.getint and in speech marks high score. And that's it. No converting, no extra class, easy. So in save high score function, we are using set string to write a string to the registry with the key name of high score name and the value of player name from the game. And then we're using set int to write an integer to the registry with the key name of high score and the value of whatever the player scored. So player press can do simple operations like this for strings, integers, and floats. The load function is just retrieving those values using get string and get int and assigning the values back to the game. So our load high score up here is still all good and we don't have to check any of the other scripts because we've used the same function names in here. So we are ready to test it. So let's save and run. So click on our persistent data again and there should be no high score because those keys don't exist yet. Now enter a name and let's play a little bit, make some points. Get hit, click restart, and boom, there is our high score and high score name. And if we browse to the registry, and there's the keys. Cool. So that's about it. Um, now, just worth a mention, player prefs can be a little buggy from time to time in the editor. 
Uh, you will find sometimes that it has a little bit of a fit and doesn't write properly or even locks your game up once in a while. Just reopen your project should fix it. Um, but generally it should be okay. And now a quick recap on player prefs. So playerprefs.setString can write any string to the registry, uh, either in JSON format or simple format. Uh, the parameters are key name followed by the value. Playerprefs.setInt and setFloat are the same, only they will just hold that particular data type. And also don't forget that second line to save the data after it's written. Playerprefs.getString or int or float are to retrieve from the registry and the parameter is just the key name. And that's about it. Uh, these various methods of saving have advantages and disadvantages and throughout your game developing I guess you'll soon figure out what you need or you prefer. So the only thing left to do now is cover other things like multiple scores in a table etc which I will get to a little bit further down the track. So I hope to see you in the next video.